got it under control this morning. Amen. Come on, give him a good praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Try. 
be thankful for victory this morning. Come on, if you're truly thankful for victory this morning. Sing it verse one one more time. Sing it. Listen to this. Listen. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. enemy if he can blind you to see that there is no victory in sight that's what he's going to do if you look around this room we've heard testimonies of drug addiction alcoholism you know um, satanism where the lord delivered them from being satanist we've seen every delivery possible from the lord the power of god can deliver the power of god can save so if you let the enemy tell you that there's no hope for you because of your past, he's a liar and the father of it because that's what the word says. We have to believe that we serve a powerful God. And if he can make you believe that he's not a powerful God, then he will keep you where he wants you. But knowing the God that you serve can deliver, will deliver out of every situation. If you trust and believe. I feel that this morning sometimes we listen to what the enemy has to say. Know the voice of God when he says, I can, I will deliver you. Believe that because his word is true. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Let me thank for he's powerful this morning. Nothing you face this morning, he can't handle. Amen. Come on, let's give him a good praise in this place.
Thank you, Lord, for this part of the service. God, we ask you, Lord, to bless the tithes, bless the offerings. Bless each and every one that's in this place today, God. Most of all, thank you, Lord, for your presence in this house. We give you praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, our pastor, our hand as he comes. I just want to say that I appreciate the Lord. It's good to be back home, but I thank the Lord for what he did while we were in revival. That some souls were saved and some homes restored. And for that, you know, it's a lot to praise the Lord about. It's good to be back home. on my way to Gainesville, Georgia to preach years ago and riding up River Road. And then the river was turned wide open and wrote this little song. The value of a soul will drive a lamb to Calvary call someone to weep and pray soul has been set free the value of a soul friend it's never going down cross was fixed at Calvary paid in full by a someone to weep and pray to another soul has been set Stand in the gap and make up the head. Beg Jesus in conviction by our way. The value of a soul. Friend, it's never going down. The price was fixed at Calvary. Jesus of praise in here. Paul, thank you. Thank you. Y'all are so amazing. Just learn, learn, thank you, boy. Help, thank you. Young men, thank you. Give them another hand clap. What an honor. So, Brother Jeff Smith is ninth here at Spring Up a Well. We left here Monday morning and preached there. For Brother Smith, Monday and Tuesday, and Brother Mickey come in and preach Wednesday. And at 5 o'clock, we left out for eight, uh, 528 miles to West Virginia. Got in Nashville in traffic for about an hour and got in Moorhead, Kentucky, where the tornado hit and uh, run in traffic block for another hour. And there were no phone service, and we got to church just in time to change and have church. But the Lord was kind. Seen more people saved this week than I have the last two or three revivals. So the Lord is, he has been kind. He has been kind. So we got home last night tired. And I'd worked three days preparing, I thought, 
So I've got one in my pocket now. And at 1130, the last night when I was ready to lay down and go to sleep, the Lord spoke this to me. And I prepared this last night. So I want you to hear my heart. I believe the Lord's going to visit us today. How many enjoyed Easter service? What a good time we had. All the food. Would you give the cooks and the, uh, all the ones that work the fun things? The hayride, the bouncy houses, the corn toss. Who won the corn toss? Stand up and let folks see who our winner was. Give them a hand clap. Have you got your ice cream yet? Baby Moses was pulled out of the river. Joseph lifted out of a pit. Moses drew out of a river. Jeremiah was drew out of the dungeon. Daniel pulled out of the lion's den. Three Hebrew boys were drew out of a fiery furnace. All wonderful stories. Uh, great story. Genesis 37, 28. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit. Sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Exodus 2.10. And the child grew, and she brought him on the Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Jeremiah 38.13. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords, and they took him out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. He's in the no dungeon with human waste and mess. Daniel 6, 23, then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded they should take Daniel up out of the lion's den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. Daniel 3, 26, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the mist of the fire. Jonah 2.10, and the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. My last example for our preach is in Matthew 14.29. They're out on the water in the ship. They look and see Jesus on the water, and something stands up in Peter, and he looks, and, and he says, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. He began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, why didst thou doubt? If you have your Bibles, I want to take a text this morning out of the book of Jude, first chapter of the book of Jude. You go to the second chapter, you went too far. Jude just has one. The book, book of Jude. What, what a writer. Keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, some show extra love, extra mercy, extra reach, some having compassion. Making a difference, your compassion will make a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Another version says, rescue any who need to be saved as you would rescue someone from a fire. Then with fear in your own hearts, have mercy on anyone who needs it, but hate even the clothes of which they have been dirtied by their filthy sins. <coughs> and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. I, I, I remember just a little while before Sheila and I got married, her, her, her brother came down, and I preached over in Georgia, and we, we came back to Copper Hill, and there was a house engulfed in flame. And Sheila was just getting ready to kick in the door. And there's a blanket there, and it looked like a child was in it. Then the policeman pulled up, and he said, he said they're, they're all gone. He said, there's nobody in that bed. By that time, the house just Im imploded. And, but Sheila was willing to, to, to risk being burned to pull somebody out of a natural fire. I, I've, I've been around people who had rescued people from drowning and who had pulled people out of wrecks. And uh, I've 
diff different stories you could tell. I've read all these stories here, but I don't want to talk about have you pulled somebody out of the pit with Jeremiah, the dungeon with Joseph, or the river with Moses, but I want you to get a vision today. And I want you to just 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 talk to yourself today and say in about two or three months, I want to look around in this church and I want to see somebody that I have helped pull out of the fire. I want to look around and I want to have my own testimony that I've made a difference in somebody's life. I just want to preach to you a little while about we need a burden to pull people out of the fire. I, I believe eternity's close. I believe heaven's real, but I believe there's a place called hell. I believe there, there's a place where the worm dieth not and the fire's not quenched. Hallelujah. I, I, I looked up the word fear. It's a fear or a strong, do, a, a strong dose of respect for something that is life-threatening, dangerous, or alarming. Sin is dangerous. Sin should be alarming, and sin is definitely life-threatening to a person's spiritual life, their soul. Therefore, sin must not be tolerated, nor should the effect of sin be watered down. We should have no stomach for sin. I looked up the definition of pull. It means to snatch someone out of a dangerous situation. We need to quit looking and just say they're good people, they're bad people, they're, 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 they're well-learned people, or they're, they're unlearned people, they're rich people, or poor people. We need to quit looking at people like that, and we need to look in their eyes and realize your eternal soul, you have a human body that's going to live a few years. But inside of that human body, you have an eternal soul. And that eternal soul is going to spend forever. And maybe God brought me in your life, not just for you to be the person I buy gas from each week. Maybe not just the person that adds up my groceries each week. Maybe maybe the Lord didn't put you on this machine beside me just so we both could make a living. Maybe he put me here beside you because some back there, you had a praying aunt or you had a praying mama said, Lord, I'm fixing to leave and go to heaven but don't but don't don't let this baby go to hell without somebody reaching for him perhaps i wonder who has god put in your life i wonder who has god placed around you that nobody's praying for and nobody's reaching for and nobody's got a burden for and everybody's give up on i, I wonder who has god placed around you hallelujah angel i remember when when we dedicated your babies and the best i counted that day you had 40 about 44 people in this house you you personally invited and and if she can get 44 people in the house in a week surely you and i could get four people sure surely hallelujah hallelujah i want to i want to start I, I i want to i want to preach to some lost people i want to preach to some people i want you to bring some folk in here they don't see no way out and they feel like it's over they feel like they've gone too far my my phone rang was it was it one one thirty two o'clock this morning a lady's screaming would you pray brother anthony i i can't hear from god i can't feel god and she was literally screaming there, there are people out there they just need to know somebody cares and somebody will pray for them and somebody will reach for them and somebody will stand in the gap have you have you pulled somebody out of the fire jerry i, I remember this has been on my mind for three days but i remember i'm in the office and the phone rings and and they answer the phone and they said we brother when would you come to the phone and and his name was Jason, and he said, "He said I'm in the mess. I've sat in this apartment for two years. I, 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 I'm on substance. I'm not doing good. My life's a mess. And every day the devil tells me there's no hope for me. That I've went too far and I've waited too long. And he said, "You preached last night on TV. I heard you, Brother Wynn, that there's always hope, Brother Wynn. I, I, I don't feel any hope. Is there hope for me? I, I've lost my home. I've lost my job. I've lost my family. Everything I've got's gone." And he said, "I." I I said, will you come to church? He said, I don't have no way. I said, Brother Jerry drives a van. He will pick you up. Brother Jerry picked this young man up, brought him to church on this side of the altar. He went. I preached on mercy that morning. He went and he got down in that altar and he wept and he prayed and he gave his life to Jesus. 36 years old. I mean, he got saved. I mean, really, really, really got saved. On the way home, he told Jerry, he told 
Brother Jerry said, this is the, one of the best days of my life. And Jerry was talking later. He said, you know, his job's gone. His family's gone. His health's gone. With, with substance, he's, which broke his body down. And said, son, why is this the best day of your life? He said, you don't understand. He said, for two years, I thought I was headed to hell. And he said, I haven't felt peace like this in so long. I haven't had joy like this. Jerry, what if you hadn't been driving that bus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This young man leaves church. He leaves church around 1 o'clock, goes home, changes his clothes, sits down and makes a sandwich. 36 years old, never got to take a bite of it. Hallelujah. His little heart busted and he woke up in heaven, pulled him out of the fire just about two hours before his little heart quit. Hallelujah. Pulled him out of the fire, Jerry. Hallelujah. Son, you got a lot of treasures waiting. You got a lot of treasures waiting over there. Hallelujah. I can't help but wonder what's waiting over yonder. I can't, will there be any treasures waiting on me and you? I just don't want to burn. I hear people say, I just want to get through. I don't just want to get through. I want somebody in front of me. I'm pushing. And I want somebody behind me. I'm pulling. I want to lay up some treasures. I want to help somebody make it home. Why don't you lift your little hands and say, I don't want to go by myself. I want to help somebody. 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 I want to help. I want my life. I want my life to help somebody. 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 I remember, darling, I remember the first time Pete came in here. Pete came in here and he sat over there and he had big earrings in each ear. And, 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 and I'm just going to preach today. I'm just going to preach. If we're going to win souls, we need to learn how to love people. We need, we need to learn how to care about people. Big, big old ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People said, people said, I said, I said, leave Pete alone. He's mine. Meet me and Jesus. We, we love Pete. And I, and I went over and Pete, Pete was repenting of sins that would that make you turn red. He's repenting of sins and he's crying out to the Lord and he's praying and he's reaching out to the Lord. And I, I watched Pete grow. Hallelujah. I, I watched, I watched Pete and, and, and when, when it was about time for Pete, to pass. He had he had just just desperate death, deathly health issues. When it's about time for him to pass, I went to UT and he's on the top floor and he's got his bed about this high. And he's there at the window. I said, what are you doing, Pete? He said, and he's he just moments away from death. I said, what's going on? He said, I'm watching these birds and me and Jesus having such a good day. And he said, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I didn't face this a year ago when I didn't know Jesus. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I didn't face this two years ago go, I'm so glad that I'm in this place right now. And he said, Brother Wynn, what am I going to do? I said, I'll tell you what. I said, I heard what the doctor said, but I believe you've got a few more weeks or months left. And I said, I'm walking out of this room and I'm calling Aunt Betty. If I know a prayer warrior, Betty's a prayer warrior. Call, they, 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 they'd give him two or three days to live. In two or three days, he's back home and he lives a few more months. Hallelujah. And then he goes to heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Don't give up on anybody. Don't let go of anybody. Hallelujah. Somebody got to have somebody stand in the gap. Somebody. Everybody needs somebody that will fight for them. Everybody needs somebody that will reach for them. Everybody needs somebody that won't let go. Everybody needs somebody with the burden. Everybody needs somebody that will give them another chance. Everybody needs somebody that will pray for them. Needs somebody. They just need somebody. They need somebody. So on my second trip to UT to pray for, for pray for Pete months later when when time had changed and it's time for him to cross. My heart's real heavy. I'm riding up the road and just you get so close to to, to uh, folk they just feel like yours. I, I got a I got a hundred people call me dad. I got one that calls me pops. And I love it more than you will ever know. You will never know. He'll text me. How are you, Pops? I love you, Pops. I'm missing you, Pops. So, so I was I was preached. People call me preacher, preacher. 
So I'm headed, I'm headed to, 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 to UT, Sheila and I, to hug Pete and talk to Pete, love on Pete. Got my head down, I'm walking through the lobby. My heart's heavy. You, you fall in love with you, little sheep. Become part of your world, part of your life. Got my head down, I get close to the elevator, and I bump into a gentleman. I didn't mean to, and I back up and start apologizing, and I recognize him. A little preacher I used to work beside, a little preacher I used to preach with, a little preacher I used to go to church with, and you little preacher, think things happen, and, 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 and he got away from God. And I looked in his eyes, and I told him, I said, I said, Jesus misses you. He says, what? I says, Jesus really misses you. And when I told him, I told him, I said, I got a word for you. He said, you got a word for me. And I said, I said, yeah. And he thought I was just going to rip his hide and be mean to him. And he, he said, okay, I'm ready. And he, and he was just, I mean, he just almost like a fight stance. I'm ready. He said, what's your word? And I said, Jesus misses you. He says, what do you mean? I said, I remember when you used to fast and pray, tears running down, you'd worship the Lord. And I said, the enemy told you, you've gone so far, there's no way back, but the devil's a liar. Jesus is waiting on you. He misses you. His spirit melded. I mean, from ready to punch me to ready to weep, and his spirit melded. He said, you think he really misses you? I said, not just think. I know. I hear that voice right now. Tell him I miss him. I don't know if it had anything to do with it or not. I don't know. After over 12 years been away from God, in two weeks he's back in church. Hallelujah. Got to see him. Got to see him again. But it was less than two months later. I'm looking down, walking by a little casket and I was so glad when I saw that guy. I didn't tell him you're a disappointment or you're a loser, you're a failure. I'm so glad when I met him. I didn't stir up my self-righteous religious nose. Say, look where you've done. Hallelujah. I was so glad I heard the heartbeat of Jesus. Hallelujah. When somebody stand to your feet say, God, you've had so much mercy on me. Don't let me be hard on nobody. Don't let me be mean to nobody. You've had so much mercy on me. Don't let me give up on anybody. I, I, I preach this. In, 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 in West Virginia, but I, I was praying. I was praying. I said, oh, God, I'd like to be a lad in a Samson's life. I'd like to find me a Samson that used to speak under such an anointing and such power and such authority. Come out, I didn't know the next would be your uncle. And when I was a teenager, amazing minister of the gospel, heard him preach. And a lot of things happened and life shifted, drifted as far as you could go. Now I watched, watched repentance and brokenness and restoration. And in the hospital, I won't ever forget this, in the hospital knowing that there's not many days left, he turns to that doctor. Best time, remember the story. And he says, "I've got to get out of here. I want to do my first works over. I'm going down to that river, and I want to be baptized." Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah! And God was saying, "It might have been probably the last time he walked on this side. He's on. He's on. He's got a. He's got another life in another place now." But he got out of that car and family on each side of him, and he made his way down to that little river bank. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just a few days later, he made his journey off. Hallelujah. I wish you'd get a hold of somebody's hand, would you? I feel the presence of God in here. And would you whisper to Jesus, would you use me to pull somebody out of the fire? Would you use me to help somebody? Would you use me to reach somebody? Would you use me? Some you snatch from the fire from the fire when they repent, you have mercy on them. Others with fear. Using wisdom, we approach different people. And I want to preach this slow today. Using wisdom, we can't deal with every person the same way. 
everybody's wounds are not the same. Everybody's growing up is not the same. Everybody's story's not the same. This is where we must refuse to go witnessing half-cocked without praying through. If there's any area we need to be led by the Spirit of God, it's in reaching for souls. How to deal with that soul. How to reach for that soul. I, I, I remember as a young pastor going to the hospital with somebody having surgery. And it was just a, not a big change of making it through. And I remember walking down the hall praying and I could just feel the heaviness. And I seen two doctors talking and they said, wonder if there was anything else we could have tried or anything we could have done different conversation. And I knew, I don't want to look back at a soul and say, is there something else? I want to know. I did my best. Now, now hear me, hear me. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be a pastor, but I'm gonna, we're just going to slow down and do some teaching. At the end of the day, I can't save nobody. I don't care how much I fast, how much I pray. At the end of the day, salvation is not in my hands. I give them an opportunity to call on Jesus. Hallelujah. But when I, when the Lord sends me to somebody, now hear this, hear this. Everybody's not going to like this, but hear this. When the Lord sends me to somebody, he's not only going to reward me if they get saved, he's going to reward me because I went. Did you hear hi, did you hear that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After I've done my part, after I sound the trumpet, it's between him and them. Uh, some, somebody hear me right now. Hallelujah. 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 So, so it's, my, it's my job. It's my job to plant the seed or to water the seed. And I need to be, I need to be close enough to God. If it's plant the seed, then I need, to, I need to see that. I just need to stop right now and explain why Jesus died. If I'm going to have to plant a seed, I'm dealing with a whole new ground. If i got to plant a seed, I don't, I, don't, I don't need to talk to them about heaven and hell. They don't even understand the blood of Jesus. I don't need to talk about them. You're fixing to go to hell cause what you're doing. They don't understand what it means to be saved. If I'm planting a seed, I need to just stop everything I'm doing and tell them, hallelujah, Adam sinned. He blew it. And we were all cut off from God. But 2,000 years ago, Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, hallelujah, stepped from eternity into time and he paid a debt that I couldn't pay. He paid a debt that I owed. He paid a debt. He became my ransom. He became my redeemer. He be took my place. He became my sacrifice. And friend, he wants to be your sacrifice. He wants to take all your sin and put it on him. And he wants to take his robe of righteousness and put it on you. He wants to forgive everything in your past. Just like a judge would stand up and say, throw away all the evidence. It's contaminated. Hallelujah. This man facing nothing. Everything you got, I'm throwing it out. Jesus wants to grin at the devil. It's saying, devil, everything you're accusing him of, I'm throwing it out into the sea of forgetfulness. That's as far away as the east is from the west. And somebody ought to stand to your feet and thank him that your sins are forgiven. You know, why wouldn't you want somebody else to be forgiven when we got forgiven? Why wouldn't you want somebody else to be set free when we got set free? Why wouldn't you want somebody else to find heaven when we're on our way to heaven? So we, we need to find out, are we planting a seed or are we watering a seed? If we're watering a seed, then it means they already understand the plan of salvation. The seed's already planted. And we got to love on them. And when, when you water, sometimes you need to pull a few weeds. And this is all got to be done gently or you can destroy the roots and kill the plant. Compassion often means watching over someone, helping them with accountability. Now, pulling... This, this ain't going to go over, but we, we've got this mentality. Well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get me a miracle deliverance mount, and I'm going to tell somebody Jesus loves them, and I've done something. That has little to do. That's maybe plant a seed. That has little to do with pulling somebody out of the fire. When you pull somebody out of the fire, you attach yourself to them. And whether it takes a day, a week, a month, whether it takes a year. Con Connecticut, Sister Kalinske, she, she tells a story. She said they were... 
had some elder people in their community, and they asked that. Some of them said, Jim, want to do something for God? Everybody can't go to mission fields. Every, everybody everybody can't, can't, can't evangelize. Say, but we got some people in our town that society's forgot about. Their children don't have time to help them. And, and the first one, I've got, I've got a woman. She, she's not a nice person. She's mean. She's grumpy. She's hateful. She uses ugly words, but she don't got nobody to care for her. She don't got nobody to buy her groceries. She don't got nobody to take her, eat out, take her shopping. Don't know, got nobody to help clean her house. And she has nobody to hire nothing. Do we have a volunteer? And the little woman squalling. She said, I've been asking God to let me make a difference in somebody's life. She said, I'll take the job. A year went by and nothing, nothing but, but going home crying, fussed out or cussed out. Why'd you get here late? Why, why can you only stay three hours today? I need you four hours, not one thank you. Four years go by, 10 years go by, nothing turns around. Getting a little weary, 11 years go by, 12 years go by. Finally, one day when the woman had just bit her head off and been so mean, the little elderly woman turns, turns around and says, I don't understand why you keep putting up with me. I'm just mean to you and treat you every way, and all these years you just keep coming back. She said, why? The little woman said, sit down, and said, I've waited 12 years for this why said I've gently witnessed to you said I've waited 12 years she said I'm not here because you're nice you're the meanest person I've known in my whole life I'm not here because you're sweet there's nothing sweet about you I'm not here because you're kind you've never been kind to me I'm not here for your money I've spent the money you've never you've never even offered me a dollar I'm here because you have a soul and Jesus loves you. And I care about you. And I've grown to love you. What do you mean you've grown to love me? You're, you're, you're not young. You're going to die and you're going to spend eternity somewhere. But you don't have to be lost. You can call on Jesus. And she explained Jesus to her. The woman got down, repented, gave her heart to the Lord, became the sweetest woman in the church. How? Because somebody wouldn't give up. Somebody wouldn't give up. Somebody wouldn't give up. Somebody Somebody wouldn't give up. Somebody wouldn't give up. Everybody don't need to go to Africa, India. Somebody needs to knock on their neighbor's door. Somebody, somebody needs to tell that boss, sir, I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. I, I care about you. And I want you to get it right. I want you to make heaven your home. Lot, Abraham stood yet before the Lord for Lot. Lot was inspired because he was special. He was inspired because he had an uncle who was a friend of God. Is there some friends of God in here that will make up their mind? If they go to hell, they're going to go to hell over my prayers. They're going to go to hell over me weeping at their feet and weeping in my altar. If you go to hell, you'll have to go over my fight. You'll have to walk past Calvary. You'll have to step over the blood. I wish somebody would call a name out. I wish you'd call a name out. I'm claiming this soul. I'm begging the Lord to turn this soul around. I'm asking the Lord to have mercy. I, I never caught this in this sense till 11.30 last night. Amos 4.11. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you were as firebrand plucked out of the burning. It, it, you looked up the original firebrand. It could be a part of a stump. But it could just be a big stick. But he said, he said, you were in the fire and you were burning. And I reached in my hand and pulled you out of the fire. But yet you've not returned unto me, saith the Lord. First Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. In the book of Luke 10.30, And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and he departed, leaving him half dead. By chance there came down a certain priest that way, a preacher. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. I ain't got time, son. I got to go preach summers. And likewise, a Levi, the priest, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. I got to go get my praise on. I ain't got time to mess with a, somebody's hurt and wounded and bleeding. But a certain Samaritan, a certain Samaritan, just an unknown, somebody that shouldn't have done this, as he journeyed, came where he was, came where he was. And when he had compassion, and he had compassion, 
compassion on him. Somebody, we, we, want, we want our churches to be an emergency room. We're going to be open from 11, and preacher, I need to be out of here by 12, 15, and, and tonight we'll open at 6, and we need to be out of here by 7.05, and Tuesday we'll open at 7, and we need to be out of here by 8.05. We, we want our, our churches to be a hospital room with emergency room with set time, and you come and we'll help you. But we don't need just emergency room. We need some EMTs that'll, that'll take a burden in this house right now and say, Brother Wynn, if you'll help me find them, I'll go where they are. If you'll call me, Brother Wynn, I'll, I'll go where they got that needle in their arm. I'll go where they're sitting on that bar. I'll go where they're in the wrong hotel room. I'll go, I'll go where they're eat up with bitterness and anger and depression and discourage and struggling. If, if, if you'll help me pray to him, find them, I'll go after him. Hallelujah. He went where he was. The man was robbed. He, he went on a journey and he fell among thieves and he was robbed. That There's a power of hell right now. It's robbing people. There's all types of subs. It'll rob you. It'll rob you of your integrity. It'll rob you of your money. It'll rob you of your health. It'll rob you of your pride. It'll take everything you got, but there's a Jesus walking down your dusty road. He's coming to restore. He's coming to seek and to save. He's coming, he's coming to turn your life around. There's somebody in this service today. I'm trying to stir your burden, but there's somebody in this service today, and the Lord's whispering, that preacher's talking about you. He, Jesus wants to pull you out of the fire. He wants to turn your life around. But a certain Samaritan, when he journeyed, he came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, and he bound up his wounds, and he poured in oil and wine. And he set him on his own beast, and he brought him to an end, and he took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, and he gave them to the host. And he said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendeth more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Hallelujah. This is the only place in the Bible so far I've found. Somebody said there was another, and this is the only one I've found, that when Jesus comes, he's going to owe you. He'll owe you if you invest in a soul. Hallelujah. It, hallelujah. If you'll invest in a soul. I'm preaching I'm preaching down in, in Carbon Hill, Alabama uh, many, many years ago. And it's on a Wednesday. We're in revival. And people are being saved. And it's on a Wednesday night. And, and, and about where Boyd's sitting, a little woman sitting there. And we get ready to dismiss. And she stands up and starts screaming. She said, I, I'm not really afraid, but I, I'm pretty stressed. I'm pretty nervous. She said, we've been dealers. We've dealt. We've done everything everything and she said I just I just got saved just the other night and she said I'm back tonight and my husband said if you go to that service tonight said when you come home I'm going to beat you I'm going to take care of you and, and she said I don't know what to do and we gathered around her and we wept and we prayed we cried out to the Lord probably for 45 minutes till just peace that passes understanding come hallelujah I, 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 I came back home that eat revival and they came back home they called me said brother when will you come back for revival I went back and I'm looking and getting up to preach them, look over a crowd, and there stands a face I've never seen. And, and I asked somebody, I said, Who is that? I said, You remember that little woman that slipped down the floor? Said, said her husband, said, said he, he, he was a dealer, said he messed with everything, dealt with everything, mean, fight anything, hurt people, just, just, just the roughest man in the world. Said he wouldn't come to church and he's out cutting pup wood. Said this church started praying that night. We kept a burden and started praying. He's cutting pup wood and conviction got on him. He threw his saw down. He said, Lord, if you'll save me, I'll never never sell anymore. If you'll save me, I'll never put any more in my life. If you'll save me and forgive me. Hallelujah. Why? Because one little wife said, devil, you can't have him. I said, oh, Rabbi Yataya, I wish somebody'd stand up under this anointing, call somebody's name and say, hell, you can't have him. Hallelujah. The, the blood's too powerful. Power's too powerful. Jesus is too big. Grace is too strong. Hallelujah. 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 Let him claim y'all and plains and islands. Somebody reach for souls. Somebody get a burden for humanity. Somebody reap between the porch and the altar. Just, just this man's heart was gold. I'd preached in his church for many years. It didn't vary. Two people, one of the most faithful churches ever seen. They, they would run from 75 to 79. It seemed like if you had visitors, somebody didn't show up. And it was just, just as them steady numbers they, they were telling me. Preached there for years. I go back. There's a new family. There's a new family. There's a new family. There's a new family. 80, 90, 100. And it's not numbers. It's families. It's eternity. It's destinies. 
And I said, I said, I've preached here for years. I've preached on so many burdens. I said, who's all these new people? I said, whose church they come from? I said, oh, these didn't come from nobody's church. I said, these folk ain't never known the Lord. They've never known nothing. I said, who are they? They said, Kenneth. I said, the man that just got saved two revivals ago? They said, yeah. I said, I got to talk to Kenneth. I went up and I started out. He didn't understand my, my Bible lingo, but I started out. I said, Kenneth, what bait you use it? He said, what are you talking about, preacher? I said, catching all these fish, what bait are you using? What are you doing that's working? There's at least five families in this church that you've got here. He said, oh, Brother Wynn. He said, I don't know nothing about church. He said, I started, he said, one of the first things I found out was I wanted to live for God. And he said, I found out by myself I wanted to pay my tithes. I wanted to give 10%. And he said, I found out I wanted to pray and I wanted to be in church when these doors opened. He said, but then I got to thinking about where I came from and all my friends came from. And he said, I was out praying. And he said, the Lord spoke to me, cut wood, and he, he did some farming and trading. He said, the Lord spoke to him, said, said, if you'll set this aside, I'll bless you. He said, so every time I sold or did something, I'd set aside $5 or $20. He said, when I'd get 60 or $70, I'd call one of my old buddies I partied with. I said, hey, what you doing Friday night? They said, well, we don't know. He said, we don't have no plans. He said, can me and my wife, and he, they didn't know he'd been saved. He hadn't talked to him in months. He said, can me and my wife pick you up? He said, kind of dress up a little bit. He said, can we pick you up? We want to take you to eat out. I, I want to buy you a steak. They said, why, sure. So they think they're going to go listen to rock music, cuss and talk and, and they eat a steak. And he said, quick, as they saw me, they knew something had changed. And he said, I learned this, Brother Wynn. He said, he said this, this is what's worked. He said, I don't talk any about Jesus. I don't say I just let them know I'm going to church now I'm changed. And they said, I let him get halfway through their steak. And he said, when they're halfway, I leaned over and said, would it be all right if I drive by Sunday morning and pick you up? He said, a guy eating your steak that you paid for, he said, that might not even like you, but he'll probably say yes. And with tears running down his face, he said, all of them haven't stayed, but this many stayed. He said, I haven't won all of them, but I've won this many. I've won this many. I've won this many. I've won, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, so my mind was going back to this, and, and, and I, remember, I remember Paul and Stephen were talking about a, a, a man they wanted to, to come to church. They wanted him to visit the church, to come to church. And I, and I, I hear them talking about for us, and what are we going to do? And I hear Paul say, I know what we do. We're going to go over and plow his garden and love on him. It's about this time of year. We're going to go plow his garden and love on him. And they went and plowed the garden, and he was in church that next Sunday. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want our church just to be a hospital if you lost come. But somebody go out. Somebody got to go out and show them you care. Somebody go, got to go out with the love of God. Somebody got to go out and reach. I, I don't want to be mean, but I've had Jehovah Witness over and over knock on my door. I've never had a Pentecostal person knock on my door. Or a full gospel person, aren't you saved? There's a hurting world out there. We can make a difference. There's somebody bleeding in the shadows of the church, and we can make a difference. Had a little neighbor. I had a little neighbor for many, many years. I'm not even sure, and we became good friends. I'm not even sure he ever knew my name. He called me Preacher Boy. I'm not sure he ever knew my name. He came to me, and he said, my home's in trouble, and she's left me. Would you pray? Would you come down to my house and pray with me? And I prayed, and the Lord showed up, and I said, do you want to give your heart to the Lord? He said, no, not, not right now. And, and, and we, we prayed a little more. And after several weeks gone, she's back home in two days. He hurt his back real bad, and he sends for me, and I go down, and I pray. And the Lord literally gives this, this lost person a miracle and heals his back. So he stops by one day, and, he's, and he's, I'm out here working. He says, Preacher, I've really been thinking about it. He said, I, I think I'm fixing to show up and let you save me. 
And I'd waited, I'd waited and waited. I said, son, I can pray and your family come back. I can pray and God healed you. But I can't pray and you get saved. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to repent. You've got to call on the Lord. You've got to, you've got, you've got to feel that. I knew he was feeling conviction. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So, so his little daughter dissed him right, right before he passed away. And he told her, she said, Daddy, are you okay? He said, he said honey, he said, and, and, and she said, he said, honey, the preacher came by, explained to me about the Lord. And he said, I've made everything right. Everything's okay. And just, just in, a, in a day or two, he was gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder if we've done our best for Jesus. I wonder if we've done our best for Jesus. I, I, I know I'm preaching a long time, but I got to share this. List this. List this. Luke 23, 38. And a subscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrews. This is King of the Kings. Hebrews 23, 39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself in us. If you're the Christ, save yourself and save me. Don't let me die here. He wasn't talking about spiritual salvation. He's talking about getting off that cross. That's all he wanted was a fix. But the other answer rebuked him, saying, Does thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeedly justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. You got to hear me careful right here. The enemy will want us to spend all of our time reaching for that first thief, arguing and fussing and pleading when he's not ready to be saved. He just wants something to change his day, but not his eternity. Please hear this. And we get so frustrated with him because he never changes that when the second thief comes into our life that we could change his destiny. We're so burnt out and tired and weary with people that we let a soul slip through our hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus did not snarl at the first one. He did, he did not even rebuke him. He just left him alone. But when he found somebody that wanted eternal salvation, he said, this day will thou be with me in paradise. This day, this day will thou be with me in paradise. But the other answer rebuked him, does thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? I've got more I want to preach, but would you stand to your feet and would you bow your head? The second never asked for a temporary fix, but he desired eternal life. Hallelujah. We've got to hear the person's heart to know how to reach them. And you can't hear their heart if you're not tuned in in prayer. Hallelujah. When tomatoes ripen, when tomatoes ripen, Brother Dave and Tim, they just went and bought a bunch of plants in, in, in about July, August, September, when these tomatoes ripen, each time one ripens, you only got two or three days a week or something to pull it off the vine or it'll get too soft or it'll fall off and it'll rot. Hallelujah. You, you've got to realize when God's deal with the soul and he sends you that thing, you, anybody can't get saved any time they want to. People only get saved when a godly sorrow is working and when the Spirit is drawing them. No man can come except he's drawn. Did <laughs> you got to hear this? You, nobody can. You can. I, I I can't sing a song about buried mom and get you crying and get you saved. I may make you sad, but that's not salvation. If you're going to get salvation, they got to be a godly sorrow that makes you realize I'm a sinner and I'm lost. And if I die now, I'm going to a burning hell. And when that godly sorrow comes, then there's a repentance not to be sorrowed after. Hallelujah. 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 I wish a hundred people would slip out of your seat and come and stand with me and say, God, I don't want to stand on judgment day with empty hands. I don't want to stand on judgment day and my life's never affected another. I don't want to stand on judgment day. I went to Chattanooga to look at a gun in one of the big sports stores. And I'm in there, and I'm looking at the gun, and the guy comes up and says, Your brother Wynn says, I watch you a lot. He said, I'm one of the assistant managers here. He says, I watch your program a lot. And immediately, I felt in the spirit what I sense in this room now, conviction. 
And I asked him, how are you in Jesus? And dropped his head with tears in his eyes. And he said, could we walk out in the parking lot? We walked out beside my truck and we had one of the best altar calls I've had in my whole life. Right there beside my pickup with the door open and him standing up against the door squalling, repenting, and give his life to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, Paul wrote and said, knowing the terror of the Lord, knowing that eternity is going to be a long time, knowing that there is is a place called hell, knowing that we're eternal beings. Oh, 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 God, Paul said, I persuade men. I persuade men. God, there's going to be the incorruptible crown, the crown of life, the crown of glory, the crown of righteousness, the crown of rejoicing. Hallelujah. Lord, that crown of rejoicing is for us soul winners, for you are our glory and our joy. Hallelujah. For what is our hope of joy or crown of rejoicing or not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus It is coming, for you are our glory and joy. Lord, I'd like to have a crown of rejoicing when I get to heaven that we'd won some souls. Would somebody pray out loud, Lord, there's there's needs in here. There's, there's people that are sick. There's people that are struggling with depression and heaviness. And God, we're laying all of our needs aside and I'm expecting miracles to happen because when you reach for others, you always reach for us. But God, we're laying everything aside. There's financial needs in this room right now. We're laying it all aside and we're wanting to burn. God, we're wanting, we're wanting a mandate from heaven to pull a soul out of hell. I want to hear. I want to hear my personal details that you're summoning me to send me after a soul, a family, a teenager. Oh, God, somebody pray out loud. I asked you, Jesus, to let a burden fall. To let a burden fall in this house. Let a burden fall. I'd, I'd like to look around tonight or Tuesday or next Sunday, see four or five family faces we never saw before. <laughs> I get so caught up in praying for me and my needs and the needs of those around me. I forget there's some folk out there that nobody's praying for and nobody's reaching for. Nobody's fighting for them except hell. Pray a little more. So please, Jesus. You came to seek and to save that which was lost, and you told us to occupy till you come. You told us to occupy, to do what you would do if you was here. If you was here, you'd be reaching for that little woman at the well. And you'd be reaching for that little lady there about the stone. If you were here. You'd be telling Peter, Peter, I, I'm, I'm praying for you. You're going to be converted. You're going to be okay. I'm praying for you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, some of us can very well be lost in eternity if somebody hadn't really prayed for us and loved us and fought for us. Could we do this before we dismiss? Would you join hands with somebody? Would you ask the Lord to stir their heart? To look out into this hurting world and be a light in somebody's darkness and be a strength in somebody's weakness and be hope in somebody's hopelessness. Would you turn around and pray for somebody right now? That the Lord, that the Lord would be so kind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those that you see, join hands with somebody or touch somebody. Just pray, Lord. Send us into somebody's life to be light in their dark world. Somebody so surrounded by hopelessness. <clears throat> Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. Everyone, head bowed and eyes closed. Is there anyone lift your hands and say, Brother Wynn, I'm that one that you're preaching to that don't know Jesus. But anyone, are you here today? Is there anyone in this room that don't know the Lord? 
Nobody looking but me and you. Is there anyone that would lift your hand and say, I'm that one, Brother Wynn. I'm that one that don't know the Lord. I'm that one who wandered far away from the Lord. Are you here today? Are you? Is everything okay with you in Jesus? If you, if you pass today, is everything okay? If you leave this world today, is everything okay? One more time, whoever's beside you, pray for them one more time, Lord. I want to leave this service with just, just a desire to make a difference in somebody's life. I want to find somebody hurting and be, be healing for them and strength for them. I don't want to get so caught up in the first thing through just wanting something from me that I miss the second one that I could change their life. So I've got to hear the heartbeat of people. I've got to hear their heart. I've got to hear their heart. Pull them out of the fire. Hey, David, the garment spotted by the flesh. <laughs> when we stand on the other side, Lord, I, I want to see faces I've helped make it home. Lord, I don't know how many hugged my neck while I was gone and whispered, Brother Wynn, that sermon you preached about 94 letters from hell. That's the reason I'm in church now. I got saved. I got saved. I got saved. God, I want our lives to make a difference. I want our living to make a difference. I want our walk down here to make a difference. Let me pray one more prayer. Now, Jesus, unselfishly, we've asked for others. We've asked for others. We, we've been to Abraham praying for Lot. We've been you in the garden weeping over your disciples. With intercessory, we wept for others. Now, Lord, I pray for this people. I asked healing to fall in this way. <laughs> That's healing the fall in this room right now. If you've got a sickness, call on him. Hallelujah. If you've got a sickness in your body, reach for it right now. I believe there's going to be, hallelujah, I love anointing with oil and laying hands on, but I believe we're about to experience it. It's going to be a wave of healing go through. Hallelujah. 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 I feel a wave. Hey, if there's something going on in your body, pray right now. This way he'll get all the glory. Just you and Jesus, you and Jesus, you and Jesus. Lord, it's already paid for. It's already finished. Hallelujah. If thou canest believe all all things are possible, and Lord, I feel healing in here, Lord. We, 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 we do preach healing, and we believe in healing, but we spend a whole service reaching for the hurt, the lost, and the wounded. But there's needs in this house. There's needs in this house. Turn finances around. Open doors. Property, open doors. Make a way. Restore. God, heal, heal the hurt and the pain. Heal, heal hurt. Lift it. Yeah, turn away. Lift it, Lord. We're your people. We need you today. Hallelujah. 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 Shake hands with at least five people. You, you don't know their name and love on them. You're free to go. But before you leave this building, shake hands with at least five people. You don't know their name. And ask them their name and thank them for being here. Oh, we love you so much. Love you so much. God bless you. Don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock, Tuesday at 7. God bless you. Thank you. Bring a soul, win a soul. Touch a heart, change a life. Make a difference in somebody's world. God bless you.